Nice. All right. So actually, this is just kind of a, a, a sneak peek in what we're, the after product is going to be on my screen right now of the Waza dashboard. Uh, but I'm going to tear this down because right now it's on this Proxmox server and I'm going to restore it to this, uh, this thing. So uh, if you have your own stuff, I would suggest making a backup of whatever Ubuntu box you're going to use or server you're going to use for our, um, our Waza install. But um, I will start us off with kind of what Waza is, and I'll reference Waza's main quick start page, and I'll kind of walk through use cases as well. So what Waza is, is as you saw just briefly there, is kind of this nice dashboard of connections into devices. Um, I can go into that more clearly under the use cases, but I think I'm gonna go into architecture here real quick. So architecture, make sure this is nice and big. This looks pretty big. Yeah, that's, that's good. Uh, so I'm gonna blow up this picture here and really all you need to know about are, it can connect to a, a was an agent that is, that has like file beat on it and stuff like that, that ships over the information back to that pretty dashboard. Uh, but you can put it on desktops and laptops and cloud infra, virtual machines, I think containers even, we'll, we'll, we'll look through some stuff. And then you got this main thing on this right side, which is kind of the Waza stuff. It's got it, this too much here, really. I mean, it's like master node, worker nodes. Okay, sure, sure. And then it's got the dashboard and indexers, of course, because it's on Elastic and all that kind of stuff. And then ultimately, you see the, the dashboard with the users. Uh, primarily, I just show this piece to just say, hey, you know, there's basically it's an Elk stack. Uh, that's been wazified uh, for a dashboard, and it's got a cool agent that can go to all sorts of things that ships over the log data and other things like incident responses. We'll, we'll go into that in the use case, but um, all right, let's get back to it. So we're gonna go into kind of some other components of this. So let me make this bigger. So we were just talking about, you know, the endpoints and the agent. So specifically, here's the agent and how it's kind of broken down. Maybe I can get this a little bigger. No, nope, I can't. That's about as big as it gets. Um, so it's got some cool things like active response being like, oh, I see a whole bunch of things scanning me from one IP address on multiple ports. I'm actively going to put my firewall up on it. And that's kind of what the active response piece is. Then there's like command execution, which is it sees some kind of command and it and it respond it does something because of it. There's a cool thing called configuration assessment. Now, what that is utilizing is what they call the Center for Internet Security's um, baselines, and it'll actually go ahead and run those baselines against your system and say, "Oh, it looks like you have SMB version one on. You fail that kind of assessment." So that's what configuration assessment is pretty neat. Uh, this is a new thing, this container security. I have not seen this or used, I mean, I have containers, but I haven't used it. Maybe we'll I have a container. Uh, maybe we'll see this in action later. Anyways, uh, it just, this is just to show the agent is more than just sending, uh, it's, not, it's more than a file beat and just kind of sending stuff over. It does much more like here's the file integrity monitoring. It also does. So it's like, oh, is this file, the same oh no it changed that kind of thing and then of course it does log collection it's kind of a, a big thing that it does and what seems to be a newer thing for it they've got very direct malware detection things like they're like oh you've got a crypto miner we can find this very specific crypto miner right um they've been doing that lately which is cool and great and i'm happy that they're they're doing that um they're so why I'm a little hesitant there is because uh, when I install Sysmon on the system, I want like the full Sysmon logs and they kind of, you got to do a little bit of massaging with their stuff. You have to configure it to be like, oh, when this Sysmon log occurs, make this a Waza alert and let it show up on the dashboard. And it's, it's not quite like that. Um, I have to use other things like Helk or whatever that just, just, throws the whole log into your thing and then you can just cruise through them. So that's why I was a little hesitant uh, on that piece uh, if, if people were checking that out. I haven't really looked at the system inventory, but I mean, just having an agent on the box and it knowing, you know, the OS and uh, a couple other things about it, I guess, yeah, that's a, that's inventory. 
pretty neat. Uh, so yeah, it does do encryption. It does use a key to go back to the server, that kind of stuff. And on the server side, you can actually tell, you can like disconnect from agents if you want. I, I won't go too much what's going on over here, but just uh, think of this as really the dashboard and being able to query it like any other Kibana type scenario. Uh, the biggest piece was really that that agent is super cool and it has the same uh, Kibana type of dashboard, which is also very cool. Uh, Waza does kind of throw their own flavor on it, which is nice because they like say, hey, this thing has related to PCI. This kind of things can be related to GDPR um, and so on and so forth. So that's an interesting thing to also see for like compliancy things, right? They're like, hey, do you have this kind of monitoring? I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> Uh, and then, and then speak to that. So let me get to the, let's see here. I want to get to, so we can look at the dashboard again, but the dashboard is kind of a prettier thing of what we just went over. You can do stuff in the cloud. So here's like Google, here's Amazon, here's Office 365. Security events is pretty much just the logs um, that it pulls over. Uh, integrity monitor, that's that file monitor again. Um, all just in a nice Kibana kind of cool view. Uh, another thing that I, I, I just saw recently, I saw this virus total. If you have like the API key, it'll like do submit things to virus total, which looks super cool. Uh, vulnerable container. I'll check that out, Sponger. Uh, we will check that out. Sorry, uh, I didn't, didn't want to ruin your flow. <laughs> but I, I ended up ruining it anyway. My bad, dude. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. I'm I'm glad that you know you had a container. I'm down to uh, use that. I haven't seen that container before. So cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. And all right. So yeah. So I'm gonna kind of get out of this dashboard thing. We kind of went over it um, without it being a dashboard. Um, I want to go into the architect, but mostly what you need to have for it to even start going. So uh, this will be good for tonight. Tonight we want to know about, you know, how we're going to uh, install this kind of uh, server so then that we can uh, create either agents for Windows or Linux or containers or whatever, and then, then throw the agent onto whatever machine we want so that we can monitor it and tune it if we want, uh, but mostly so that we can just gather all the logs. Uh, for tonight. Uh, we can do other things in another part two series. So here we are at the quick start page. So hardware requirements. All right. So it looks like, and for us, you know, we're, we're not going to go over our 25 agents. So we'll be good at, you know, uh, eight gigs of RAM and 50 gigs of storage. So hopefully that's low enough for others to follow along with. Uh, on their own Ubuntu box, Ubuntu server. So speaking of operating systems, I guess it doesn't doesn't have to be Ubuntu. It can be CentOS. Uh, it looks like these versions, it looks like it does support 2204, Sean. And then uh, I think I'm doing it on 2004 tonight on Ubuntu. Uh, a browser, I guess you just find that out when you open up the dashboard and it doesn't display correctly. Um, interesting. I don't see edge on here, but I use, this is what this is. I use edge, uh, for my stuff. So interesting. It's not compatible, but whatever it, it kind of is. Um, oh yeah, it does say other Chromium based browsers might also work, <laughs> but the old internet 11 Explorer is not supported. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So really, um, that's kind of. That's kind of it, really. So the next step would just let's just go into creating this thing and, and getting our feet wet. So let me minimize this. Let me well, this is probably gone now. Let me refresh that. That's probably gone. Yep, that's gone. Don't need that anymore. Um, cool. So the first thing is uh, for me, I got to make sure that I have something so if i go in here i see i have let's see hardware i already removed the iso so you can't see what ubuntu version it is but anyways let's just make sure that this has been rolled back looks like 
This has been rolled back. I'm gonna just grab the IP really quick. So it looks like it's 46. That's good to know. So uh, that's pretty much the last I'm gonna see of that screen for a while. So I use for my remote management mostly is this remote desktop manager free uh, that you can go and get uh, places um, online. Uh, yeah, it's just, just type in that and you'll, you'll find it. So what I'm gonna use is this. And so basically I would just create a new RDP session. I would name it like up here. Then I would give it its IP address, which there's 46, just like we need. Uh, I know that the username is server admin because that's how I created the Ubuntu box. Uh, the first username on it is server admin. And then I put the password in as some secret password that no one should ever know. Just joking, it's super easy. You'll probably see it later. Um, and then I'm just gonna go say, okay. Uh, it would have been created and then I can open this session get on the box. Hopefully everybody is on their box. As I can see, it's 46. So that's great. So the first thing I would do, and, and hopefully everybody does it, is sudo apt update minus y and and upgrade minus y. Um, so hopefully this, there's not too much of this that's going to happen. So while that is updating, I am going to pull up the resource, the quick start resource that everyone should also be going to. So let me copy that, put it in our meetup text. So someone can easily click on that. We'll roll it up to the top and you want to go to the part that says install Waza and go ahead and click on this copy piece on the right. Oh, you gotta make sure you have curl too, by the way. So like, let's say, okay, what, what does this say? Uh, 157s can be upgraded. Mm, maybe I won't upgrade just yet, but I did update. So uh, sudo apt install curl. So make sure you have, cur what? DPK was interrupted. You must manually run. Okay, sometimes this happens, so I'm glad this, went through this sudo dpkg uh, space minus minus configure space minus a. Um, sometimes you got to do that. I'll even put that in um, the chat. But yeah, sometimes you got to do this piece. I'm not exactly sure why. Uh, dun, 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 dun. It usually takes not that long. So while that's doing that, I can go back to our quick start. Copy that again, just in case. Oh, okay. Uh, anybody else having problems right now? Sean, I think you're following along. Marco? Hmm. Yep, yeah, I'm oh. following along. Okay, okay, I haven't run into this problem yet. <laughs> nice. And it looks like mine just cleared up. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. So, yeah. Again, copy that. Uh, I just right-click on mine. Oh, did I not do the... Hang on. I'm going to cancel that out. Control-C. And uh, make sure to get sudo apt install curl. Okay. So, it's in. <clears throat> and then let's go ahead and run this. It'll run for a while, not too long, really. So let me go back here. Really at the end of all, all the installation, it's gonna come up with saying, hey, do this right here. Oh, um, basically go to your browser, go to your IP address, and you should be able to use admin as the user, and then it'll, it'll paste your password on the log, and so you'll have to grab that password. It's only gonna be, um, right there on the console. So, um, oh, see a sponger. Um, it's, you should grab that and put it in somewhere like a password manager or something. Cause you will not be able to get back in if you don't have that password. So well, let's go back. It looks like starting was a indexer. So we're almost there pretty close.
Pretty close. And while that continues to go, I'm going to fill some time with some after activities. Uh, maybe later we can take a peek at something that Waza did an article on. Uh, this is how to detect Active Directory attacks with Waza. They have a part one and a part two. Uh, the notable pieces of this is they're detecting DC sync attacks, golden ticket attacks, Kerberos attacks, all real like you should be detecting those kind of attacks kind of things uh past the hash attacks and if you pull out the main uh dc's uh password database the ntds.dit file so very cool uh it it runs you through you can go ahead and it's like hey this is the quick start it'll talk about here this is you know you need sysmon here's the config file download it we'll tell you how to you know put it wherever run this very specific command so you install the the config uh and then on the actual system you have to run you have to look at this osec config on the agent on the on the box uh and then just make sure that it's grabbing the the, the uh, sysmon stuff and then of course, you have to restart the Waza so everything just knows what it's doing. And just add one one thing on the server side of Waza, uh, which is you just copy this whole thing. Uh, and this is kind of the thing that I mentioned earlier where I was like, uh, there's it doesn't take all the sysmon logs and alerts. It only takes like the ones it creates for itself. So this is what I meant. Like, like you have to create very specific things to say, hey, this ID, hey, we wanted to do this. Uh, it's part of this rule ID. It's yeah, it's very specific, and it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, and then you have to restart the manager on the server side, and then just start attacking uh, it. And, it. and it goes into hey, this is the exact commands, this and that. Uh, so let's go back to seeing where we are with. Oh my, it's still kind of. Oh wait, starting service. All right, we've got some stuff moving. Great, 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 great. Good, good, good. Well, while that is doing that, I'm gonna sneak over to my Ansible area, and I was playing around with um, using Ansible to deploy the Waza agent. So, sudo nano playbook. Uh, we'll do win Waza. So basically, I'm like, hey, only on Windows things, copy this file that I want to send over to my Windows thing, which is going to be the Waza agent. Make it go in the, a public folder for users, right? Because I don't know what users is over there, but I do know public is. Then go ahead and, oh, is this? Oh, it doesn't really scroll very well. All right, and then you know, I don't think you need to set the location. I just have that from some other experiment. But anyways, run this script. And basically, I make it run a win shell command and say, hey, run the command prompt. K, I think, is exit after it, this thing runs. Uh, use PowerShell, no profile, no interactive. Uh, do the execution policy, whatever. Uh, um, bypass, probably, um, or unrestricted. Uh, yeah, unrestricted, and then use this file, and that's that that Waza agent, and then that agent will run. Although, didn't I? No, I used a different script. But anyway, so that's the Ansible piece that it runs a script, but the script is in this files area for Ansible. It has to kind of be in the same directory, so you got to do CD files, or actually, I'll just do, yeah, I'll just do ls files. Uh, I don't know what it's called, so I'll just do that. Okay, so it's invoke win was an agent. So instead of that, let's take a peek at what it looks like inside. Cool. So inside, there's just like three commands. So I'm basically, I'm saying, hey, run this. You'll see this later. This is the the agent. Sleep about ten seconds and then start the Waza service, and then that's when everything will call back. Um, okay, back to the server. Let's go back to the server. So back to the server, here we are. Um, 
get back to the Waza. Up oh, here we are. Okay, so it spits out the username, admin, and it spits out the password. So again, need to put this somewhere because that just doesn't um, that doesn't stay around. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the browser. Uh, let's pick a new one. New browser, HTTPS. 192.168.0.46, I think. I think. Okay, cool. Yep, yep. I know. Not secure. Um, deal with that later. Okay, so username, admin. Um, this was from a different time. Yeah, you can have my password. I don't care. Um, no, what did this do? Invalid username or password? That seems wrong. Maybe it used the, oh, for some reason that got all messed up. Anyways, so this is what you'll see in the beginning. It's kind of checking a bunch of things, checking the API, checking the index pattern, uh, checking all these things, um, which is very important. We want these checkbox because if there's any of these are red, it's a problem. Um, yeah, it's a, sometimes it's a call out to support problem. <laughs> Um, which is okay, because they've got a Slack channel you can go to uh, and uh, ask them those things. I was about to say, we get support? What? Kind of. Yeah. Um, kind of do. No, uh, mine, mine worked, by the way. Oh, perfect. Great. How about Marco? I was concerned it's about... It's working! I did it! Wow. Very nice. Very nice. That's awesome. Cool. Well, great, 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 great. So the next thing I'll do then, let's go ahead and just pull over the Waza really quick. I'll show you. So in Slack, they've got a Waza channel and they have a community. This community, they're like, hey, I have an issue. Like everybody's like helping each other out here. Uh, super great, super technical. And uh, this announcement's always great too. This is when they're like, hey, we're doing a new thing. Like, hey, we're now detecting these bad things in Active Directory. Hey, we do this now, all these cool things. But the big takeaway to this is they have a community that you can ask questions. So definitely take part in that. All right, so now we're back to the dashboard. Let's add an agent. So really nice. They just have it right here, right front and center, add agent. So click on that button and you have a choice. You can do uh, Red Hat CentOS, uh, Ubuntu Debian, Windows or Mac. So for me today, I'm doing Windows, so I select that. Uh, then it's, a, it's asking, hey, what's your Waza server? Well, it's not localhost. It's 192.168.0.46, as we had before, right up there. Um, assign a group. Default is fine for right now. Install enroll agent, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to even pay attention to any of this. But here's the, the thing I mentioned earlier with invoke web request. So this is a PowerShell script that will be thrown on the Windows box to install the Waza agent. And then at the very end, you have to do this net start Waza service for it to actually call back. So let me copy this command and I am going to be a little crazy and I'm gonna just go um, sudo nano, I'm just go file up. And I'm just gonna take take that and put it here I think oh yeah so this still has 46 I think everything's the same and we don't send over the key in the beginning so I think I could run this exact thing because I had the server okay cool let's try it why not all right so um Enzible Enzible playbook uh, playbook, Windows Waza, and, uh, oh yeah, what are we going to put it on? We're going to put it on a, a Windows machine. <laughs> so I say Windows Waza, so let me cancel out of there and do a sudo nano host. And it looks like I only have one Windows, it's, ten, it's number 18 in here. So let me go, what is this one? Windows 10, uh... PowerShell. Uh, I actually don't care if it's admin or not. Uh, I just want to know 
if it's uh, IP config, oh, there we go, IP config. Okay, so this is 18. Okay, cool, so that's 18. This is the box we're gonna put an agent on. All right, cool. So let's go back to Ansible. That's the box we're gonna put it on. It's gonna be in Windows. Uh, this knows inside here, inside that YAML. So sudo nano um, playbook win YAML in here under host Windows. So it knows to go to that other file under Windows and use that IP address. That's how this playbook knows what to do. Just a FYI. So let's do Ansible playbook um, playbook win go. So it's going to run through the Ansible playbook. It says, hey, I'm using, I'm doing this play. I'm gathering the facts. I'm going to give you the IP address if I can connect to the system. Um, and what I didn't say, what I did do uh, that you don't know about, see so it connect to the system. It's green. It's good. Uh, so I went over here and I actually ran this script that does WinRM type stuff, configurations for Ansible. And then I, I ran WinRM quick config. And I made it so that anything can connect to it through WS man, through WinRM basically. So that's the only thing that I, I didn't show us doing, but it's right here. This is what I did. Um, so back to Ansible and it looks like, okay, cool. It copied over the single file. That's fantastic. That's that PowerShell I wanted to run on the system. So if I go over here, whoops, if I go over here and I go like, I showed you in the code, I showed you like uh, under user. So we go to this computer. Ugh, <laughs> full drive. Uh, users, we go public. And I said it was in public somewhere. See, it sent it over here, invoke win, and that did it today. Two, si no, two, six. Uh-oh, hang on. Let's uh, let's make sure things are going. Eh, it said it changed, so it said it did a thing. So let's, let's check the dashboard. Check the dashboard. Did it do a thing? Don't make my cool Ansible not cool, man. <gasps> yes, so cool. Come on, I see you back there. Why is it like taking forever here? Let me just click on. There we go. Let me refresh just to make sure you know I'm not I'm not fooling nobody. So like, let's say I had. All right, cool. So we have one active Windows 10 PC on 18, just like we kind of looked at. Uh, and it knows it's Windows 10 PC because that's what the computer name is. By the way, that's what it's pulling. So this is like, we, we talked about inventory, sure. So it's got the computer name, it's got the IP, it's got the agent version, it's got the operating system right here. Um, and it got some other things too. Oh, it looks like it tried to do, did it really try to do that? CIS benchmark on it? Nice, it did do it. So yeah, I was doing those kinds of things. But back to the what's cool about Ansible is if I put in that host uh, file a whole bunch of you know your fleet of Windows 10s that were already configured with uh, basically these two things and a user account that could get to them, um, then you could basically put Ansible or not Ansible, you could put Waza on all the things really fast. So really that that was it that this is my presentation to install it to kind of show off Ansible a little bit to do some automation and um, We could move this into another part two kind of thing where we actually you know do things and and look for things in the logs uh, but I'm gonna show real quick uh, the discovery dashboard that you kind of reminds you of Kibana so here it is there's the alerts Here's the Kibana type looking stuff. And of course you can, you know, filter through all these things to look for things. So yeah, with that, uh, does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns? Yeah, I want to bring something up. I, I think this is pretty awesome. I definitely would love to get another follow-up on this if possible. I think, um, you know, a lot of folks that are trying to get into cybersecurity, they may not have access to the expensive paid for software that does uh, that, that kind of simulates almost like what you'd be like in a sock um, or on a red team or blue team as well. Um, so I think this is really valuable since it's free, it's open source, it's got a lot of cool tools. Um, so yeah, I'd love to get you back in here. Right on. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and to that point, you know, Proxmox is also free <laughs> and uh, it's only running on my like, 
uh, Dell desktop workstation T550 or something. That's like, I don't know, maybe like 10 years old. Um, but, uh, yeah, and it's like, here, here's the, uh, summary. I think I have, what is this? Not very many gigs of RAM, right? 59, 49 gigs of RAM, 12 CPUs. Is that, is that your, that's pretty, that's a pretty small hard drive you got in there. You almost got more RAM than you got hard drive space. Oh, hard drive. Uh, well, kind of. So, like, it, I have multiple um, ones. So I have uh, okay. this one, which is a terabyte, two terabytes of data, which is my main one. And then, yeah, you're seeing, like, these other funky local ones that are a little different. Um, yeah, that's a whole talk in and of itself, how, <laughs> how Proxbox works and... Uh, the different views. Uh, a pro a Proxmox uh, talk would be awesome too. I, I, I'm a big fan of Proxmox. That's what I use at my lab. Um, and I think if sharing that, because I think I, I honestly think VMware is pretty limited on what you can do with it, um, especially the free version. Um, and especially since they've, they've kind of got rid of like the old vSphere client and stick you with that, that web GUI that they got now, which is not very good. So I think um, showcasing like some open source tools like this would be pretty cool. Yeah. It's really how I do my like red team, blue team kind of stuff and, and figure out, oh, okay, this is what we need to do for some configuration to help defend, um, or help someone configure something. It's yeah. I, I don't know what I would do without it really, uh, probably pay a lot of money. Yeah. Well, cool. So code blue, should we put this on the Windows 10 machine then? Your chat GPT ransomware and see if Waza catches it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to make sure it's uh, well quarantined off. I don't know how uh, quarantined off it is. You could set up uh, a um, host space firewall um, on the vm um that can like you could just say no outbound anywhere and you can just toggle it on and off which is pretty cool you can just say drop and then you can just do everything yeah oh you gotta know the you gotta know the interface um it's probably vbr01 or something anyways yeah you can see that for next time that. if you want yeah see that next time <laughs> Um, cause yeah, the other part is, is I'm actually, so with RDP, like using this kind of stuff. So if you have some kind of thing going on in RDP where here, let me show what I mean in properties. If you have local files, local resources, and you, you have hard drives, all of a sudden you're now, this machine is now connected to other machines. So like, see, look at this. Like if I ran that ransomware, oh my gosh. <laughs> And if it traversed all my other stuff, not good. But yeah, for like things like this, I should totally like make this not a thing. And then as soon as I do that, this should go away. Hang on. Refresh. Oh boy. Hang on. Maybe I have to do the whole thing. It's weird. All right. Oh, I'm still. Oh, it's probably because I'm RDP'd in. It's, it's still the same session. So hang on. Let me. Just close it and then create a new session uh, with the no, new uh, local resources. Uh, and then now, yeah, so now it's not there. Now it can't get to me. I don't think. I don't know. What's on my network? <laughs> I might be able to get there. Anyways, yeah, there's some things that need to be done. I can't just run stuff <laughs> uh, all of a sudden uh, on that machine, uh, unfortunately. So cool. Great. Well, uh, this has been fun. Uh, I appreciate everyone coming out and listening to this. Uh, if you want to know more, just, you know, hit me up in Discord and, and we can do some other things. Or if you, you know, have some good ideas for part two, we can come up with something and make scenarios up uh, and, and do that. Thanks, Jesse. It was very nice. I'm so excited to use this on my network. Yeah, how's that going for you? Did it actually work with your arm? Yes, Are... it works perfectly. Woo! Oh, nice, <laughs> I'm nice. I'm so excited. It worked on my Windows, man. I'm already like looking at it. I have a score of 32 on my CIS benchmark. 
Great. Amazing. Yeah. That's yeah, this awesome. is this is I I'm stoked to what they did to this. They did a really good job adding a lot of like adding the stash board cuz like I said before, I the only way I I've interacted with was a was when it was OSEC and I was forced to use like Alien Vault dashboard, which is complete garbage compared to this. This is uh, very streamlined, so yeah, I'm gonna definitely be playing around with this personally. Uh, maybe even my own my network, my own home network here. Yeah, and just a, just a forewarning, um, you know, you're looking at this, and you're like, oh my gosh, like, am I getting like? You know, defense invasion happening is persistent privilege escalation happening. You know, you're like, ah, all these things. So what you got to keep in mind with this is Windows logs are very vague. <laughs> and when they write rules, they're trying to like, you know, get close enough. So a lot of these are kind of benign, right? Um, they're not quite what they appear to be. If, you, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So like if I go here, if I go into the actual box and pull up PowerShell. Uh, as administrator, maybe? No, not. Oh, geez. I just did it like three times. Okay. Is this good, everybody? Be safe. Never be admin. I'm talking to you, Code Blue Twenty Nine. <laughs> Always have Sorry, this. I was not focusing. <laughs> yeah, I was just showing how there's a, a UAC prompt and should should always do that, not just be straight admin. <clears throat> hint, hint, Code Blue Twenty Nine <laughs> from your previous presentation messing with you uh all right so in event viewer if you just look at the logs they're just so vague they're just so like oh what does that actually mean and so you could think it's really hard for some monitoring software to be like yeah what does that mean <laughs> and then try to translate it into their own product which that's what Waz is trying to do. It's trying to translate it into its own product. So what I've found is a lot of people are like, oh, am I being attacked? Is there a privilege escalation happening? It's like, oh, no, not really. It's just how vague. Uh, it, it just it, it casts a wide net and catches a bunch of stuff. And some of the stuff is benign. Like this is, what is this? Valid accounts is the MITRE uh, technique. And then the tactic, defense, evasion, persistent, privilege, escalation, initial access. Uh, okay, but what is this? Let's see, it's a 6340, which is maybe it's a security auditing. Is it just a logon? Yeah, 4624 is just a logon. Um, yeah, so I guess you can think of it. It is authentication success. It is uh, a persistence sure uh privilege escalation i don't know about that um I, I guess yeah if you just create an account and you can log in with it in other accounts it could be considered that right logging in that's an initial access <laughs> um just having somebody's username and password and logging in with them is defense evasion oh what's that yeah you gotta read between the lines um on these things um see, see how easy privilege escalation is <laughs> that's right super easy we hunt admins um but yeah the best thing to do is is to, yeah go through like one of these how to detect active directory attacks with waza and just go through the thing and then see what the attacks are and then being able to um help tune this for it yeah, so that's where probably like using Atomic Red Team and doing all those attacks and, and figuring out how that looks and, and making uh, alerts based off of that. <laughs>